This is an off-the-shelf video on Saratoga, the turning point of the American Revolution, 1777. Um, the second printing, uh, published 2006 by GMT Games, um, Volume 1 from Battles of the American Revolution. Uh, Mark Miklos. Um, yeah, Mark Miklos, game designer. Um, Yep. Given uh, the GMT scale, uh, 4 for complexity, 7 for solitaire suitability. Um, and uh, we have uh, the map laid out. Um, I think most of the units, if not all the units, set up for the, for the battle. Uh, got exclusive rule book with exclusive rule book with 16 pages all together, including one page counter scan, uh, one page next day scenario, ammo depletion log, um, a whole page on explaining the uh, the replacement counters um, that come with this second edition, replacement counters for other games in the series. Um, and historical, yep, several pages of yep, several pages of historical uh, background. So really, only <clears throat> really only five pages of game specific or exclusive rules. The, um, the series rule book, the Great Battles of the American Revolution. Um, Pretty simple um, game from a uh, an initial rule scan perspective. Um, basically, it's 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 the basics with uh, it's the basics with tactics chits um, included and and I guess fairly. Really well developed army morale system, but um, but it looks like a looks like it's going to be a fun game to play. Got my expanded sequence of play, and I've got my uh, player aid card. So the expanded sequence of play initiative segment, although I think for um, Saratoga. Initiative is handled uniquely for the first two, if not three turns. You have initiative player turn broken down into movement phase, rally phase, defensive artillery fire phase, rifle fire phase, and close combat phase. Step by step close combat sequence, including um, several uh, advanced game only steps. Second player turn, same as above. Roll switched and end of turn segment. Already I see, already I notice that this is one of those games where the uh, see the so-called advanced rules. Um, I don't see why I wouldn't just start playing them from the beginning. Example, yeah, momentum chits. Um, I don't see why I would not want to play with that if if I understand the idea behind the momentum mechanic. I don't see why I would not play with that. Um, where's another good example? Um, well, under the uh, section for rifle fire, yeah, rifle fire, there's an advanced rule for German Jaeger rifles. Um, Again, I don't see why. I mean, there's not a lot here to begin with. I don't know why I wouldn't play with that. Um, since uh, since I think I have an idea of why historically it would be significant to pay attention to uh, German Jaeger uh, units. Start with some of oh, the counters. Um, 
got Burgoyne here on the top, we got Phillips, and we got Frazier. Um, these are leader counters. Um, start with Burgoyne up here, um, the, the four digit um, code on the left center is his starting hex. Um, and naturally you could have a, uh, a turn reference there for a leader that comes on after the start of the game. Um, name, um, all easily, I consider this all very easy to read by the way, so far, so far. Um, great portraits, leader portraits, uh, rank. So we've got three stars, two and one, and Von Riedesel, um, two, but I think that this seniority, uh, is a, is a game mechanic. So, um, uh, Phillips is senior to Frazier and Burgoyne is senior to Phillips. Um, and then look at Frazier here. Um, the, uh, the three values in the bottom here, we have close combat DRM. One in this case, leadership DRM. Now is that a two or a minus two? Um, right now I'm going to guess that's a, a two, not a minus two, and then six for movement allowance. Okay, so we do want to read that as two because, um, or I'm sorry, one. Uh, wait. Close combat DRM, for example, the one is added on the attack, subtracted in the defense, and the leadership DRM, uh, two in, in Fraser's case, is added to uh, morale checks and rallies. Um, just real quickly in passing, I'm not going to really discuss this in detail, but the, the idea of a leader adding a close combat DRM is, um, on the face of it, I question it and I have an issue with it but I can go along with it in a really uh, roundabout uh, design for effect, um, in, in a design for effect sense. But uh, right away when I see something like that, it, it, uh, it at least is gonna give me pause and decide, okay, what is the designer doing here? I am going to go ahead and assume, and I'm gonna give the, the designer the benefit of the doubt, that when he looked at the combat performance of units and then linked that to the presence of leaders, that there seemed to be a correlation to units performing better in close combat with that leader present, but I still consider, I don't consider that to be a direct relationship. So that's just what I'm pointing out as design for effect. Okay. But I would rather have more detail. I would rather have n not more detail in a game like this. And this, in, in this game, the level of detail is, is quite appropriate actually across the board from what I've seen so far, but in another game on Saratoga with more detail, I would want to see basically why a leader why the correlation between certain leaders and performance of units in, in combat. In combat units, we got the 3rd New Hampshire on the American side, the 47th um, on the British side. Um, starting hex setup, hex ID, uh, turn 3, turn of reinforcement or arrival. Uh, plus one unit morale for the third New Hampshire, zero for the 47th. Um, okay, morale checks. Um, morale checks. Um, a roll, <laughs> four. <laughs> um, add the uh, unit morale. Uh, yep, uh, so four plus zero is four. Five or greater uh, success, four or less is failure. Um, so on the American side, ooh. Oh, yeah. So roll of zero is zero, not 10. Zero plus one for the third New Hampshire's unit uh, morale is one, which is four or less for a failure of a morale check. Um, 
On the flip side, units are generally one less morale, so the 47th has a morale of uh, zero on the front, minus one on the back, and 3rd New Hampshire has plus one on the front and zero on the back. So on the edge of the map, um, there is a uh, morale track, one for the British, one for the Americans. Um, there are three general categories. So we have high morale, uh, we have fatigue, what's labeled fatigued, and then we have a third and lowest category wavering. Um, these are the starting values for each side at start British, at start American, level 14 on the track. And for each of these uh, categories, we have an initiative modifier. So on the top says initiative plus one, unit morale normal. You go down one level to fatigue, you have initiative plus zero, unit morale minus one. And then at the bottom, you know, under wavering, you have initiative minus one, unit morale minus two. So a unit's base morale is the uh, is the printed value here, plus one and zero in the in the examples here. Whereas modified morale is this base morale plus or minus the the army morale modifier. Um, so if the Americans on the morale track are under fatigued uh, or in the fatigued zone on that track, unit morale is minus one. So the third New, York, New Hampshire would be plus one base morale, minus one for army morale. Uh, yeah, for, for a modified morale of zero. Some artillery units here. Um, name, Donnell, and reserve artillery on the British side, starting setup hex, ID, um, uh, graphic of an artillery piece. Unit morale, plus one on both sides. And flip side values, zero and zero, okay. Um, and then we have strength, three, and movement allowance, zero. Strength, two, movement allowance, two. Um, yeah, that's the same for the infantry. I skipped right over that, didn't I? Okay, third New Hampshire, left off with morale plus one. Bottom left here is a strength of three, moving allowance of four. And when he goes to the, what they call the reduced side or, um, uh, okay, some units have values on both sides. These units have two steps. Okay, so there's a step reduced side. Uh, there's a full strength side and a reduced side. Okay, so on the reduced side, in the example of the third New Hampshire, again, morale goes down one. We mentioned that and the strength goes from three down to two, but movement allowance stays the same. Um, okay. Similarly with the American artillery and the British artillery. Yep. Same. Yeah. Okay. Same for the British artillery. I've got some, uh, militia here. Lattimore's Connecticut Militia, uh, minus one morale, three and four, strength of three, movement allowance of four. Oh, and it's a one-step unit, no backside. Got some uh, uh, light infantry. Uh, yeah, LT for light and rifle armed. The R in the circle there, plus one morale, one strength, four movement, and one step. And then we have Connecticut Light Dragoons. Morale zero, strength of two, movement of six, and again, one step. So Dragoons, 50% higher movement allowance than the infantry. As com comparing these two units. And those are the main um, unit counters. So I'll just step through the expanded sequence of play. So this is generally for the Great Battles of the American Revolution series. Um, initiative segment, which again, initiatives handled differently for the first few turns in Saratoga, but using just the basic series mechanics, each side will roll a die. 
um, and that'll be modified by the Army Morale DRM. That's the minus one, zero, or plus one, um, as indicated on the morale track, printed on the, the map that I mentioned before. So if we, if um, both armies are in a high morale state, it's plus one, plus one on both sides, so British would win the initiative. Initiative player, uh, so we would flip the... So also printed on the map um, edge, we have a turn track, game turn record track, and we would flip the turn marker to the side with the, the turn, current player turn, which is the British side that won the initiative, like that. So we go to the uh, movement phase. First uh, point under the movement phase, expanded sequence of play, says shattered units may not move. So a shattered unit, uh, here we got the 9th Massachusetts, and they're on the map like that here. And they are currently shattered. Mark for the shattered marker, they may not move. Looking at the CRT, or actually a close combat table, um, we have odds ratios from 1 to 3 up to 4 to 1. Um, odds of less than 1 to 3 are resolved at, as 1 to 3 with a minus 1 DRM. Odds of greater than 4 to 1 are resolved as 4 to 1. Okay. Um, um, okay, combat results from this table. We have a dash for no effect. We have AM for army morale loss. Fire and close combat. Okay, just on the face of it, without using this in, in gameplay yet, I don't see AM or Army Morale Loss. I don't see it at all on the close combat table. Um, I only see it on the Artillery Fire Damage table and on the Rifle Fire Damage table. And otherwise, we've got uh, R for retreat, got D for dis disruption. So D for disruption. The units would receive the uh, D marker. So if uh, 47th receives a disrupted, disrupt, you know, disrupted result. D result like that, and then how do you get to shattered? Um, units are shattered if they receive an additional D result. So if the 47th received an additional D result, flip it over and it is shattered. Disrupted units may only move one hex per turn in general, uh, may not attack in general, defend at only half their strength points, directions aren't it up have no zone of control, are captured if they receive a pin result. A pin result. So, we have a, okay, pin for pin result, and, okay, so we have some pins there. Pin, 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 okay, so. Um, pin, where, huh. there they are. So a pin marker looks like that. We have pin markers. So if a unit like Third New Hampshire receives a pin result, um, what does that mean? Opposing units from in. Um, Okay. Okay, pin result actually has um, quite a bit to it. Opposing units remain, uh, let's go like this. Opposing units remain uh, engaged. So I guess we go like that. Both sides here are remain engaged after a pin result. 
Um, all disrupted and shattered units on both sides are captured. So if, uh, if the third New Hampshire was already, was already disrupted, um, and it receives a pin result, I guess it, it's, it's captured instead. The defender followed by the attacker then places his or her units in the captured box. Okay, yes, they're on the side of the map. There is a captured unit uh, units box. There's a captured units box, and next to it is an eliminate, eliminated units box. Um, and adjust army morale. That that could be significant. Um, a pin marker is then placed on all hexes involved in this close combat. The next phasing player must either A, attack with all units marked as pinned, uh, and attack all defending units marked as pinned during this player turn, or B, move all friendly pinned units so that they are not adjacent um, to any enemy units, which again, why are units moving if they're under a pin marker? But I'll... I'll I'll broaden my thinking here. Uh, leave any friendly units which are adjacent to enemy pinned units where they are and reduce his or her army morale by one. Okay. Pin markers are removed from all friendly and enemy units either at the end of the movement phase with an army morale penalty or after all close combats are assigned. Okay. All right. Uh, then we have one step loss, two step loss, one and two. So we have... Uh, a fair number of ones, yeah, a fair number of ones, and really just a couple twos on the close combat table. Um, DC, captured defender's choice. AC, captured attacker's choice. So how many? We have it's a handful of those. Uh, pinned, already talked about. Leader casually with an asterisk. Asterisk. A uh, couple handful of those results. Um, defender gains momentum, okay, at minus two and minus one. And then attacker gains momentum at 10 and 11. So this must be adjusted. I'm assuming this is adjusted die roll. Okay. So disrupted uh, units may only move one hex, like this unit here, 47, currently disrupted. They only move one hex. Pinned units may move only if they do not end their move adjacent to an enemy unit, and the phasing player reduces his army morale. Units may conduct strategic movement along roads and or tracks. I'm assuming that strategic movement is not going to be a huge factor in this battle. I'm assuming. I guess it'll play a few times and then not much more after that. All right, so go on to the rally phase. Uh, make a morale check for each friendly, disrupted, or shattered unit that is not adjacent to an enemy combat unit. So, like the 47th here, a British player uh, rolls the die a 7. Um, the unit's morale, adjusted morale, I guess would be 0, which is printed. Um, no modifier for army morale because the British are in the high morale state. So DRM would be zero. Uh, seven is five or greater. So I guess they would rally. Um, uh, modified die roll of five or greater rallies the unit. Shattered units that rally become disrupted. Disrupted units that rally become parade order or good order. Parade order is good or normal order. Okay, so um, if the 40, 47th... Um, So, like that. So, if the grenadiers here successfully rally, they would go from shattered to disrupted. And then, if the 47th successfully rallied, they would go from disordered to parade order. Next, we have defensive artillery phase. So, the non phasing player may fire any or all of his artillery units. So, let's just say it's the British. Let's say the British are non-phasing right now. We have uh, Jones's artillery unit here. Uh, we have an uh, 
uh, second New York unit in the wood line here, two hexes away. Step one, determine two hit number. Cross-reference artillery strength points with range on the uh, to the target on the fire table. So, um, fire table, okay, rifle, artillery, fire to hit table. So, the strength points of Jones's artillery unit is currently two. So, SP's firing two at two hexes is the two to three hexes range, which is eight. Eight, so eight is the two hit number. Or the, yeah, there are some DRMs. Target is light infantry, minus one, minus one target occupies forest hex. I guess, is that forest? I'm assuming it's forest, but let's check. That is forest, okay. So actually, there is a minus one DRM because the target occupies a forest hex. Fire into field works, target is artillery or mounted dragoon, rifle unit firing for the first time in the game. That's, by the way, that's an interesting little uh, chrome rule there. I like that, but anyways. So it would be minus one, okay, so Roll a five, minus one for four, which is um, less than the uh, two hit number. Um, so step two, roll the die. If the modified die roll is equal to or greater than the two hit number, hit is scored, so we missed. However, if we had rolled a nine, if we had rolled a nine, minus one for the target being in the woods, we eight. Eight is equal to the two hit number. Then step three, if a hit is scored, a second unmodified die roll is made on the artillery fire damage table to determine the result. So, roll a one, artillery fire damage table, die roll is eight, um, versus non-artillery, die roll versus artillery, okay. Versus non-artillery is one. Is that a step loss? It must be a step loss. Oh, it is a step loss. So actually, Second New York would take a step loss. Um, the result, after applying the results, make any army morale adjustments that are required. So while we're here, let's talk about adjusting morale. Um, it's nicely referenced. By the way, there are very nice rules references by number throughout the, this expanded sequence of play. Something I always appreciate a lot. So it tells us uh, when we consider after applying the results. So Americans took a step loss in that artillery fire. So um, we have to look for army morale adjustment. Army morale may need to be adjusted each time one of the following occurs. Occurs. Army morale adjustment chart. There's a chart. Army, there it is. There's a chart right there. Army morale adjustment. All right, so reading and looking at the same time. Uh, a fire or close combat result is other than no effect. We had that. A unit rallies, plus one, a leader casually, see specific rules. Pin markers are removed in the movement phase. That's going to be very interesting, I think. Okay, and then the army morale adjustment table. Rally, plus one, or minus zero. So rallying can only have a positive influence, obviously. Suffer a D, um lose one, suffer AM minus one, inflict or suffer, oh, so inflict and suffer one result. So in this case, the British would get plus one, the Americans minus one to their army morale. It's going to be interesting. Inflict uh, or suffer a two result. The, uh, yeah, if you cause a two hit, you're going to get a plus one as well, but the other side, the losing side, is going to get minus two. Capture unit, have unit captured. Again, plus one, minus one. Remove pin during movement phase, and then leader casually. Interesting. Now, at this point, um, since the Americans took a one loss, my question is, when you take a one loss, is that is that automatically a morale hit as well? So it looks like in close combat, if there was another infantry unit with the second New York, like that, in close combat, this was artillery fire, but in close combat, if you take a step loss, one unit obviously takes the step loss. Other units have to pass a morale check. If they fail, they retreat. But the unit that took the loss stays. Interesting.